The following program is intended for a mature audience. Viewer discretion is advised. This I've got to see. It's worth watching, so stay tuned. Welcome, gentlemen. Welcome to Power 60. Fantastic to see you, Patrick. Yeah, buddy. Randy, Lon, Scott, Barry, Rob. Let me you guys keep your cameras on. That's fantastic. Michael's here. JT is here. I've got a Simon Sinek spot today. Stop holding yourself back. Actually, it's funny. I'm going to share the two minutes of that. And then if we have time, there's almost like a blooper. At the very beginning of this clip, there's 30 seconds where there's a woman in the audience giving Simon Sinek kind of a hard time. And I thought this was great behind the scenes. So if we've got some time today, or maybe we'll just start with that. What the hell? And we can give some feedback of, well, what do you see? What's going on with Simon Sinek here? He's kind of getting a hard time from this lady in the audience. I'll show you that. I've also got some uh, little inspiration I can share at the end, which is always fun. It's a short clip that I found. And guys, we're talking about models by Mark Manson. We're on chapter 10. Last time was chapter nine about how anxiety is flushing out your shadow of neediness. And chapter 10, I've jumped over to courage and boldness. And I've got a few paragraphs that I curated for us today. So part of our theme today, I'm going to ask you about, which one of my favorite questions is, right? Share a win and share a challenge. Share a win and share a challenge. And it's going to be around, cur be around courage and boldness. Where have you leaned in? Where is your edge? How are you grabbing one bit of courage or boldness at a time? And I'm going to go ahead and just jump right in here to these few paragraphs from Mark Manson. Again, if you hadn't heard his book, Models, he self-published. It was his first book. And prior to that, Mark Manson traveled the world as a dating coach. I don't know if you guys knew that. But phenomenal book, uh, Models. There's the cover right, cover right there. Attract women through honesty. And we're on chapter 10. So here's a couple of paragraphs. Courage and boldness. Feeling fear and acting despite it builds courage. Anytime you're afraid to do something and feel some invisible force holding you back, yet you push through it anyway, you're building courage within yourself. Courage is a habit. Courage is a form of discipline. It's taking a certain action, even though you feel like doing something else. The difference here is that courage involves acting against fear, whereas discipline involves acting against laziness or fatigue. But this is really cool. Another question I asked on the C-Note show one day last week was, what's the difference between motivation and discipline? And here he's delineating between courage and discipline. Courage involves acting against fear whereas discipline involves acting against your own laziness or fatigue. Courage is built like a muscle. The stair-stepped exercises in the previous section are designed to progressively build your courage. So he talks about uh, progressive overload, basically, or exposure therapy. Exposure therapy is literally doing one little extra step at a time. If you're afraid of elevators, you get six inches closer to the elevator. You get all the way up to the door of the elevator. You step in and then you step out of the elevator. These are done all over many sessions, right? This kind of thing. Well, Mark Manson's encouraging you to do that with courage and boldness as well. The more courage you build, the more you'll be capable of bold actions. Bold actions require a lot of vulnerability and build non-neediness. But there's a caveat. So I jumped into, there's a caveat. You must know when you're interrupting social norms. So lots of guys on this call are getting back into the dating world. And a part of the fear is like not really knowing what's going on in culture today, if you will, how people communicate, how women communicate, whether it's Facebook or Instagram or what the hell should I have? You know, do I ask for their number? I've got, <laughs> should I ask for their number? Well, 2021, it's more like, hey, are you on Instagram? You know, connect over Instagram. So anyway, we talk about that kind of thing. But when you're bold in the world, screw all that, right? If you're shooting pool and there's women that roll up, like Piotrowski and I have had happen in, in Fort Collins, Colorado here, it's not about Instagram. It's, well, how do you act in that moment? How do you act bold in that moment? We have bold meaning you don't put them on a pedestal. That's bold in front of beautiful women oftentimes because everybody else does, all other guys do. Or bold in the way you communicate. And Mark Manson's talking about being bold so you can polarize them. You want them to love you or hate you. It's not really going to help if they feel, you know, milk toast about you. You want to polarize them. So when you're doing something bold, he says, you must acknowledge that what you're doing is unusual if you're breaking a social norm of some kind. So interrupting a social norm is not a bad thing. It's a good thing, but you have to acknowledge it that you are aware that you're doing it. So here's a little specifics. 
He says, for instance, I worked once with a guy who was very socially disconnected. We were in a shopping mall and we were walking around talking to women together. As we were going down an escalator, we saw a very attractive girl going up the escalator on the other side. And as we passed her, I mentioned to him that he should talk with her. He immediately began running up the down escalator and shouting to her, trying to introduce himself. Obviously, he says, this was a very awkward and strange thing to do. And had he been aware of how awkward and strange it was, he would have been bold. But instead, he was just unaware. And as such, he immediately creeped the girl out. This is why if you're ever doing something that's unusual, like approaching a woman in a strange location or trying to kiss her in a strange location or inviting her out with you after just meeting her, it's important that you communicate that you realize what you're doing is abnormal. As, as in, you know, I've never done this before. <laughs> this is a little bit corny. I know I've never done this before and I know we just met, but why don't you come to the restaurant with me? Or this one, excuse me, this is kind of random but I thought you were cute and wanted to meet you. Or the bolder the action, the greater attraction you're going to create. The bolder the action, the more vulnerability you show and the more polarized your response or the more, po more polarizing responses. So I'm gonna jump over to this 30 second blooper that I said I would save, but screw saving, I'm just gonna share it right away. So I'm actually gonna share 30 seconds of Simon Sinek and I'm gonna pause it. Uh, and I want you guys to jump in and I know he's a public figure and he's got like a million followers on his YouTube and he's got to be careful of his social experience here. But let's say this happened to you in a bar. Okay. Let's say you're telling a story. You're with me and Piotrowski. We're shooting pool. You don't give a shit. You know, there's no cameras there. And this woman starts to kind of give you a little bit of a hard time. How would you handle it? Here's the first 30 seconds of Simon Sinek just for fun. Let's see. Make sure I get the right screen here. Which one is it? This one. Here we go. 30 seconds. The human brain cannot comprehend the negative. It is incapable. Yes, it's true. I'll give you an example. Okay, no, no, I'll give you an example. You don't have to believe me. I'll prove it. I'll prove it. Okay, the human brain cannot comprehend the negative. You ready? Don't think of an elephant. Oh. Yeah, I know. You can't. Okay, did you catch, let me, Larry, look at his face. Look at his, look at his face. So, okay, so she obviously talked some shit. And how did he handle it? How would you handle that? Let me, let me pick on Piotrowski first. What, do you, what did you see there? How do you think he handled that lady in the audience, Rob? What do you think? I saw a fucking elephant. <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually... I kind of, I wasn't paying attention to the lady in the audience. So I was in there thinking of a fucking elephant. Okay. So, <laughs> all right. So I'm going to play it again. You, you proved Simon Sinek's point. Obviously he's an incredible mm -hmm. speaker. His, his stuff gets like 99% thumbs up. Awesome guy. But look at how he's reacting to the woman in the audience. <laughs> so that's the, that's the homework for the next 30 seconds. Watch how he's reacting to the woman in the audience. There's like two give and takes back and forth. Here we go. 30 seconds. The human brain cannot comprehend the negative. It is incapable. Yes, it's true. I'll give you an example. Okay, no, no, I'll give you an example. You don't have to believe me. I'll prove it. I'll prove it. Okay, the human brain cannot comprehend the negative. You ready? Don't think of an elephant. Oh. Yeah, I know. Okay, just curious. What do you think, Piotrowski? Yeah, the oh my God. It's 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 kind of like that thing in the bar when you know that you got that that gal kind of acting snarky with you and you say, You want to sleep with me, don't you? <laughs> What's the first thing that pops in her head? She starts thinking about sleeping with you. Boom. Yeah, hey, don't think of an elephant, but instead we yeah. got Rob's elephant. We got Rob's elephant <laughs> up in here. That's what about. <laughs> Yeah, great point. So that would have been a fun comeback. Absolutely. Anyone else have anything to say about this? Did you guys notice? So I'll, I'll oh, I, I like, yeah, Patrick, go for it. Oh, I like the, his last expression. He was basically saying, suck on that bitch. <laughs> yeah, he did the like, mm, yeah, okay, this girl. 
Yeah. So <laughs> at the beginning too, his whole like, I'll prove it, I'll prove it. And he was turning away from her. And I know he's about to give a speech in front of a gazillion people and it's going to go on the internet and all that stuff. So he had to be kosher. But if you're <laughs> shooting pool and some woman gives you a hard time, like definitely don't want to be turning away and placating to her. And I just ran across that. So anyway, all right, let's continue on. Let's continue on. <laughs> Let me go and share the rest of it since I teased you with the first 30 seconds. There's about two more minutes and this is how we hold ourselves back. So stop holding yourself back. Then I'm gonna to come to you guys and ask you for a win and a challenge around courage and boldness. Here we go, two minutes. You can't, you can't tell the human brain not to do something, right? And so what happens is we very often reinforce things when we put things in the negative, right? I can't get apart. I can't get apart. I can't get apart, right? Or um, um, I can't do this versus I'm going to keep doing this. I'm going to keep doing this. I'm going to keep doing this, right? Um, and and it's, it's such a huge thing to, to convert things into the affirmative. You're supposed to do it with children as well. We're supposed to say, we're, instead of saying to children, don't eat on the couch, we're supposed to say, eat at the table, <laughs> right? We tell people what we want them to do, not what, them, what we don't want to do. Pilots know this, right? It is well known in the pilot community that when you tell a pilot, don't hit the obstacle, they'll hit the obstacle. Because what they're doing is focusing on the obstacle. Skiers know this. If, if you ever seen skiers go through trees, do you know how they do that? It's very easy. It's actually surprisingly easy. If you go through trees on skis and you go, don't hit a tree, don't hit a tree, don't hit a tree, guess what you're watching? You're only looking at trees. All you're doing is seeing trees. You don't understand how anyone can ski with all these trees. Right? As opposed to follow the snow, follow the path, follow the path. The only thing you see is the path. Skiers know this. If you say don't hit a tree, you'll hit a tree. You won't be able to find a path because all you see is millions of trees. Mm -hmm. If you say only follow the path, you, you actually don't see any trees. There's actually very sparse trees. There's plenty of path. There's plenty of snow. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing for you. If you focus on the obstacles, all you will see is obstacles. If you focus on the path through the trees, all you will see is path through the trees. It's your choice how you choose to perceive your own career. It's literally perspective. So it's your choice how you perceive this frame of life, this chapter of life that you're in, whether it's with your wife or the next women in your life. So share with us, how are you? Are you looking at the path? Or are you trying to say, don't hit the trees, don't hit the trees, and end up looking at the trees? So share with us a win and a challenge around courage and boldness. And I'd love for everybody to go. So here's the fun part where I shut up and you guys come in. Unmute yourself, coming in. What's a win and what's a challenge around boldness or courage in your life right now over the last week or so, guys? Come on in. All right, I'll go. Yeah, Lon, go for it. Jeez. You know, I would say I'm not going first, right? I do. You're like, I'm not going first. And then nobody goes. So I wonder how long I'd actually go, so. Have you ever done that? Just to see how long it goes? Yeah, I do it on the C-Note show every single day. And it normally goes about 20 seconds. And the longest okay. it's ever gone is probably about 45 seconds. Okay, just curious. And yeah, and by the way, it's a practice for me to hold the tension. It's like, you know, I'm modeling holding tension. I, sure. mean, I guess if it hit one minute, I have to do something about it. But I've never hit <laughs> okay. one minute yet. Yeah. Sorry, I just was curious about, you know, I, I got curious. Yeah. So Please, um, go for it. So a win and a challenge. Uh, win this week. Uh, you know, for me, it, I don't know if it was so much out of courage. I mean, I just had a strange week. I just, I kind of fell out of the present this week and really felt myself doing that. So I really struggled to get back into it. Um, and I think for me, the courage was, as I knew that I was struggling with it. So I reached out to some men um, instead of struggling with it by myself. So I, you know, that would be me basically saying, look, I knew I was, you know, I knew myself that I was struggling with something. So I reached out to some guys to sort of say, hey, you know, why, what's, what's going on? Why am I, you know, why can't I seem to get out of this? And had some great conversations and sort of got out of that frame of mind if that, so. Yeah, do you um, want to share should, any more specific about that? Um, yeah, I think what happened with me is I just got out of that 
what, what happens with me, Jeff, is I get into sort of this waiting mode, right? I almost feel like I'm sort of waiting for things to happen. Um, and I'll just kind of sit and not really do anything. So it, was, it wasn't really around any specific thing. There was nothing. But I mean, that's not true. Maybe it was. Um, I'm waiting for my divorce decree to come, which I should have had weeks ago. So mm-hmm. I feel like I've sort of, as that, as that gets longer and longer, I feel like I'm just kind of like, where the fuck is that at? Um, which I got sort of an answer to that this morning. My lawyer reached out and apparently my uh, wife's attorney, they haven't filed it yet which sort of was one of those, you know, that was a what the fuck moment too. It's been a month, you know? So, yeah. Um, yeah. but I talked to Dan Fritch about that and he was, you know, he said, apparently that's not that uncommon, sure. you know, cause I mean, that's really, you know, for my wife, that would, that's it. You know, that's sort of the final nail in the coffin. And it's, it's in their hands at this point. So my lawyer is not very happy about it cause he just wants everything wrapped up and done. Right. I really could care less. I consider myself to be divorced. So it's not in my brain. It's not, that big a deal so but i think it yeah. sort of threw me off and you know and i also spent a week with sven um i think this sort of had some let down from that you know how that goes you go you go hang out with the men um, kind of the the hangover afterwards this the back to normal life is that what you mean the afterwards yeah and i don't even know if it was so much the the after the normal i think for me what it was i, I talked to sven about that for me he thought that maybe you know he is that i just had enough going on in my head that all of a sudden i'd kind of I was starting to process a lot more again. You know what I mean? You spend six days with him. You have an, you know, you have a lot of conversations. I had a lot to think about. Um, and he thought, you know, maybe just that, you know, that my brain was just kind of working again. You know, I was, I was working through a lot of things and, you know, and by working through those things, I sort of just got off my, you know, that sort of calm clarity, I guess. And it was only for myself, you know, like if I was on Facebook, I could really sort of talk to other men about their problems. Um, I could, I could see theirs with a crystal clear eye. I couldn't see mine at all. So um, thoughts on that. Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess surface level, how could you honor yourself and flip the script a little bit? How could you say that in the affirmative way? So maybe you intended to sit and not take action. And I don't know if you did that on purpose or not, but how could you give yourself some high regard there? Right. What's, what's courageous about what you did do? I mean, I'm not trying to be Pollyanna about it, but could you flip that and say it in an affirmative way for yourself? Well, and I think that's kind of, you know, I, I love that actually. Thank you. Cause that's kind of what I woke up this morning and I really kind of felt just kind of back in my, in myself again. And that's what it was, is that I realized that what I had been doing and maybe un- almost subconsciously is that with everything that I had going on, I felt like I just needed to sit with it, you know, that I couldn't, you know, that any kind of sort of bold action at that point, you know, I was, I just needed to sit with these thoughts and kind of let them percolate through and figure out what they were doing. Um, and in doing so, you know, but at the same time, then I'm like, I was wondering if I had, you know, if I should be doing more, but I think that I, I think I did everything that I could do with what I, you know, I'm, I'm usually pretty in tune with myself. And I think my body basically was like mentally, emotionally, spiritually, it was like, we just need to chill and relax. We got, you know, we're, we're growing here, you know, if that. Yeah, hundred percent. So I'll tell a 20 second story in Columbus, Ohio, a couple of weekends ago, I met Dennis Collins and he and I met six other men for steak dinners at Mitchell's amazing steak dinner. And one of the guys there, his name's Andy. Um, I, this first time I'd met him, I think he's in, he may be in mentoring men or he's definitely in the round table and things. And he asked me a similar question. He's like, I'm reading books and I'm kicking ass and doing all this stuff. And to him, I said, the bold move is to maybe for the next 30 days, read one sentence a day and meditate, you know, for the two minutes or 10 minutes that he meditates on that one sentence and think about and write about that one sentence instead of trying to consume a book every two days, go the other way. So sometimes the bold action is to go a hundred times slower and, and flip your, I, I call it stretching out time, change how you perceive time. And sometimes that's the bold thing is to, by the way, not numb ourselves with something else, but to go a hundred times slower and just be in that different pace. And that sounds like what you did. Yeah. You know, and, and that I love, you know, and I'm going to, that's, I'm going to, that helps me frame something. 
is because, you know, a couple of months ago, I'd been doing the same thing Andy had been doing, right? I had just been devouring books. I mean, just at one point I was talking to Dan and he's like, asked me what I was reading. And I listed 13 books, literally the <laughs> at one time books I was reading. And I was just like, and, and it, 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 when it, when I said it out loud to him, I was like, yeah. And I'm not right. And I knew when I said it, I'm like, you know, I'm not really absorbing any of it. And I just quit read, you know, I mean, I, it's exactly what you said. I'm reading the, um, what's the book by Michael Neal, the inside out. Yeah. There's, he has I'm a reading that. Right. And I can read about two paragraphs a night. now. Yeah. And that's really what, you know, I mean, all of a sudden I find, I just can't finish everything for me is really slowed down. And I think being around Sven for six days, was like basically like reading a book a day again. So my brain was kind of like, you know, and I wanted right. to absorb yeah. it because I mean, he's, yeah. you've been around him when he talks, you want to listen to what he has to say. Um, so I think for me, I was just absorbing so much, absorbing so much that when I got back, I needed to just a couple of weeks, almost really to process it, sort of sit and think about what I had just learned. Yeah. So I, that's great. Thank you. Yeah, that's good. So. Yeah, hundred percent. Good. And by the way, Sven and I are shooting our third podcast the end of this month, the last week of this month, and we're going to want to have either a handful of live callers to ask certain, you know, ask questions, or to get some written questions ahead of time that we're going to field. And when this is our third meeting, and when Sven and I do a podcast, it's around spirituality, and I I call my side of the table uh, secular spirituality, so not religious. I grew up totally agnostic or atheist my parents didn't have a religion and he grew up you know very religious and, and he talks about that as in his family and things as well so i'll ask you guys for some questions and that that third podcast is coming up anyway to your point lon he'll bring up like five subjects which is great and then when it bounces back to me i have to think about okay how i don't want to attack this because he's such a smart man and so well read and and all those things. So yeah, we got that coming out in a couple of weeks. I wanted to let you guys know. So thanks, Lon. I appreciate that. When he starts right, talking I, about the Bible and in and, and talking Hebrew, I'm like, oh, you know. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> I know of the Bible, but otherwise yeah. that's about it. So yeah, I don't know in Hebrew either. So anyway, so all right, yeah, yeah keep me yeah. posted. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I've been to Southeast Asia, I've studied Buddhism. Sam Harris has a great book, Waking Up, that's kind of a meta around spirituality i thought was excellent so if you want a different style of book around spirituality sam harris is waking up is really good and anyway so let's move on to somebody else i appreciate it thank you so i went in a challenge i'd love for everyone to jump in even if it's just for three sentences you know if we have time obviously but what's a win in a challenge for you around courage and boldness in your life come on in unmute yourself and come in all right here's one the yeah, courage the courage is, uh, was just right now when I decided to uh, go in and having no idea what I was going to say. So there you go. Nice. Um, <laughs> that's nice. the best I got. Um, and let's see the challenge. Well, you know, the biggest challenge is, is this incredible fear of what's next and, you know, dealing with it anyway. So, or, or I guess somehow dealing with it anyway, I haven't figured exactly it all out yet, but that's a challenge. So I mean, what's next is creeping up on me pretty quickly all of a sudden. Yeah. Is there a tip of the iceberg for the challenge? Like right this second, you know, you could change your mind tomorrow, but right this second, what feels like the difficult part of the challenge, most difficult? Um, I guess uh, I've been kind of stewing on that whole thing that we talked about with um, why, you know, um, uh, why am I doing what I'm doing and having a good answer for that, you know, just at least to start with a good answer for that for myself. And then, um, something that's better than, uh, because I think it's the best <laughs> of a lot of bad alternatives. Um, I don't think people really want to hear that as, as <laughs> I think you pointed out. So, um, so there's that. Yeah. So that's, that's kind of the immediate thing is, uh, is a, it's a thought exercise, I guess, if nothing else. But yeah. um, there you go. Yeah, good. I appreciate it, Barry. And a, a little insight for everyone else. The question was uh, why? Yes, is right. But then also, what's your ultimate goal? Like, what's your ultimate goal with this chapter of life when you're making these decisions or this decision or the fork in the road that you're at? What's your ultimate goal of this chapter of your life? And I, I challenge Barry to put that in a, 
affirmative way, a positive way when he's speaking about his wife, because they're separating here pretty soon. So that's, that's a little behind the scenes. I appreciate that, Barry. Yeah. I mean, the obvious answer to that is, you know, figure out a fresh start, you know, something that'll be awesome that, you know, that would be, uh, uh, different and awesome. But, uh, um, but I wanted to kind of get a little more flesh and less skeleton. I mean, you know, conceptually that, that works, but what is exactly does that look like? I'm not exactly, you know, I kind of, I think I know, but articulating it is a little bit of a challenge. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Have you written anything out or drawn anything or taken a step toward that? No, but I will. Nice. I'll start awesome. with two minutes on, on it tomorrow, I guess. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Good. I like it. Fantastic. Yeah, my meditative, my guided meditations are two minutes long. This whole do it for a half an hour or an hour thing. I don't know. That's much, that's a little too much for me. So I don't ask other guys to do that either. So two minutes. I love it. Yeah, Thanks I like for the two minute in. thing. The two minute thing really, the two minute thing actually requires a certain amount of focus and conciseness, which is good. Yeah, yeah. Do you want to share what I have you do since we've talked about it now? What do, I'm what sure. Do you do yeah. Um, yeah, that's a. Uh, it's, I think it's just standard thing. You tell. I think you give that to a lot of people, but um, it's a uh, uh, two minute of um, you know just in the morning is when I do it. Right after I uh, kind of get up and you know get myself you know just before I walk downstairs. Um, I just sit down on the bed for two minutes, um, kind of lotus position is, or as close as I can get to it at 55, you know, and, um, um, and just kind of introspect, I guess, for a couple of minutes, um, which may or may not involve picturing a, another version of myself or somebody and um, asking about what's, you know, on his or her mind or, you know, are, are, are fielding the same question and um, then see where that goes for just a couple of minutes. I'll set a timer. So it may be a minute, maybe two, three, four, I don't know, just however long it takes till something crops up that seems interesting. And then I'll sit down and write about it for a couple of minutes. Um, and usually that's a, you know, it's not much, it's five sentences. So yeah. that I try to stick to, I try to stick to, um, I really try to stick to a couple minutes on that. Cause I don't want to, um, start rambling off and filling up books and stuff like that. And if I, if I'm doing that, then I feel like I've kind of missed the point anyway, it needs to be one thing. So but those are my own rules, my self-imposed rules. Yeah. But it, it I helps like it. keep me focused. Yeah. Beautiful. I like it. And you don't have to sit in Lotus unless you're Barry. He wants to do that. Right. <laughs> That's good. Well, for you. Yeah. Good for you. It's sit, sit down, put a copy of yourself in the room for two minutes and ask yourself a question. And there's like Barry, you said that you can make yourself older or younger, or you put a different person in the, in your imagination in the room with you and ask a question into the space for, and just sit there for two minutes and see what comes up. And it's, it gives your psyche a chance to share either about worries about the future or resentments from the past or, you know, resentments with other people you may not be aware of, or maybe you just feel good about yourself for two minutes. That's cool too, where right? it doesn't have to be bad. Yeah, I, I give that to, I don't give that to everybody, Barry, but I appreciate your Lotus position. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. Good. I appreciate Thanks, Barry. That's great. So someone else come Thanks. in. I'd love for everybody to go. It uh, looks like Michael typed earlier that he had to run. Um, yeah, no Lotus for lawn. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So someone else come in. What's a win and a challenge for you around boldness or courage? Why well, meet yourself? Come on in. And now that I told you the 45 second limit, you guys are going to break the 45 second limit. So pretend this is a men's group and I'm going to kick you in the shin if you don't speak up because I want everybody to go. So everybody go. Yeah, I can't go for it. I think mine's pretty similar to Barry's. Um, you know, there's probably the last, uh, I don't know, six or eight weeks, this single parent life, man, really just kind of been kicking my butt, but there's, a lot of times where I, I see myself stepping up to a lot of challenges that I didn't even know were out there. And, you know, it's, that's kind of my biggest win, but that's also been my biggest challenge. A lot of my life is stepping up and, you know, taking action and just taking the bull by the balls and, and getting shit done. And, you know, it's exhausting. I think, you know, to, 
to an extent, um, that probably leads into another challenge of mine is continuing to fill my own cup and continuing, you know, my routine and, you know, doing the things for me and putting myself first. Um, that's, that's been a real challenge. And I've really kind of seen that with, with spring and summer getting here, it's going to be super busy. It's like, okay, now I've really got to hone in and find, you know, 30 minutes or an hour or whatever for me, um, to continue my healthy trend forward. So that's kind of where I'm at right now. It's kind of a bizarre scenario because the kids have always been number one to me, but now it's like, okay, yeah, they're number one, but they should be, you know, myself should be one A and kids should be one B. So, you know, that's kind of my challenge is continuing to find um, my strides forward as a person first. Yeah. Thanks, Kent. I, I appreciate you saying that. There, some guys say this in a different way. They'll say like, um, you know, they have a couple of months of the year that they feel depressed or shitty. And I relate to that. Like Joseph in Arizona, when we're down there shooting with Dennis, Dennis Collins, Joseph mentioned that. And I said, yeah, I have a couple of months, usually November and February for some reason, November and February. And it's not like a seasonal thing. I don't know. Maybe it's a family thing or it's a burned out from burned out from, uh, you know, career in November. It's like, fuck, I just want to have the year done. But Kent, um, so let me come around to you. you. I know you mentioned, I think it was on the Sino show a couple of days ago, something similar too. And I'm wondering uh, for guys that have put everyone else first, like we martyred ourselves in the past, you know, the nice guy martyred ourselves for everybody else. It's we have to get back in touch with our own self, like even liking spending time alone with ourselves, or even giving a shit whether we have 30 minutes for ourselves or not. And it feels like that's kind of the growing pains, if you will, that you're going through. It's okay. I have to have a relationship with myself now. I can't just numb it with everything else and external. It's some everybody else. How can I serve everybody else? You know, that's like almost a numbing and avoidance, and you have to <laughs> start to learn to like yourself. Yeah. So, I mean, do you, do you like yourself when you're alone? I'm kind of reaching here a little bit. I'm poking in, but do you like yourself when you have 30 minutes at a time? Is it still kind of a <laughs> tough relationship with yourself? You know, it's interesting. Cause I, I can definitely relate to the, to the, uh, the depressed state. It's, it's not very often, but I think it is, it is very relevant. Um, but I, I enjoy alone time, but I think for me right now is, is what am I making a priority in that alone time? I, I feel like I just completely shut down. I even kind of shut down, you know, my own connection to my own brain. Like, it's just kind of like you find 30 minutes just to, just to relax, which is, which is good in time too. But, you know, um, <clears throat> like I've had decent stretches of dating. I've had decent stretches of of friendships. I've had, you know, workouts, things like that, but it's just like, what am I going to make a priority, um, in, in those times? Like, you know, cause to me, you know, an hour or so for myself should be something that's, that's, you know, active, beneficial, something, you know, even if it's just, it's rest, it's intended rest instead of just kind of like shutting down and just being a freaking slug for, an hour. Like, you know, if I had intended rest or intended workouts or intended, you know, round of golf and, and make that time about me, I feel a lot better. I mean, case in point this morning, um, I ran some errands, had some, some things to do, but I actually had a chiropractor appointment. I did some things for myself and, you know, felt no hesitation about it and actually ended up having a really good day. So if I can correlate that kind of start to my day in some way, shape or form that really just kind of set the tone for, what the rest of my day is going to look like. Yes. Yeah, so is it a matter of scheduling? And if you have some surprise free time, then you feel lost or is it different? Yeah. Yeah. I think scheduling probably plays a really big role in it. Um, you know, I just got, you know, my, my daughter's softball schedule and I've had my son's baseball schedule for a few weeks now and my umpire schedule and it just, you know, the calendar's full. There's no doubt about that. And um, I think a lot of times when it went the work aspect, I am very reactive to a lot of my day-to-day -day stuff. Like, it, and I, I, it, I don't know if there's any way to really control that all day because it, it is random phone calls. It is random SOS emails or things I've got to, you know, some fires I've got to put out for work and things like that. It's, 
it does cause a lot of stress in my life. And, and certain points throughout the day, there is, oh, it's kind of quiet around here, you know, I'm, and I'm maybe not, you know, intentional about that quiet time, making it about me and, and trying to choose to um, take advantage of that quiet time. It's almost that quiet times kind of, I'm reacting to that quiet time as well. It's like, okay, now what do I do with it? You know? So um, it, it's a bizarre mindset, but I, I understand where you're coming from. Yeah. And I mean, I, I don't, I'm not trying to hear, I'm not trying to solve this for you. I got an idea, but then I want to actually ask you a question more about judgment, more of a coaching question. So have you seen those, like you put on a popsicle stick and you pull it out in the classroom and you got to do what the popsicle stick says. I mean, sometimes giving yeah. something else, the authority, Hey, I've got five minutes and you already wrote 10 different things on these popsicle sticks for yourself. You know, whatever they may be like, these are good things for me. 20 push ups. 50 air squats, whatever, you know, whatever the fuck, write in your journal for five minutes or whatever it is, something that you want to do for yourself, but you put 10 of them in a jar and you randomly pull when you got five minutes. Like that's an idea. I'm not trying to fix it, but let me go back to, um, so who's judging you that these, this time isn't used like wisely or something. It seems like, Oh, I'm not, I'm not using this perfectly. Who's, who's judging that. That's all me. Uh, there's, there's no other voice in my world that's in control of that. I mean, I'm very in control of my, you know, my, my day-to-day schedule. I'm an outside sales rep. I don't have bosses looking over my shoulder, things like that, but it's, um, yeah, I think even, even when, when I'm, when I've got time to work, when I've got time to get things done, um, and be, uh, you know, efficient from a work standpoint, I still kind of find myself thinking about my day-to-day, my kids' lives. Uh, what do we have for the kids tonight? What do we have for, you know, what am I doing for supper tonight? What am I, you know, and I, and I kind of find myself kind of wandering a little bit there, um, not really locking in on the things I should at times. But um, so, yeah, it's the, the judgment's all from me, 100%. I mean, what if you simply gave yourself a challenge and for the rest of the month of May or for the next 30 days, you catch when you're judging yourself and you maybe you write it in a book or not, or you just like, Oh, I'm pre- I press pause on all judgment for the next 30 days. Like, Oh, there's a judgment again. You know, thanks for letting me know and the press. So the practice being letting go of judgment, especially for yourself for the next 30 days and see what happens. Kind of what I'm wondering. Sure. Yeah. I, I definitely enjoy jotting things down journaling. That could be something I can add to it. Yeah, I know uh, Jason Bradbury talks about this a lot. He he goes through phases. So Jason Bradbury talks about judgment is on one end of the spectrum and compassion and empathy, if you will, uh, they're mutually exclusive. So you can't be judging yourself and have compassion for yourself. You can't be judging yourself and actually doing something positive for yourself at the same time when you're taking up that space to judge yourself. So he talked about having a, um, what did he call it? A very like stringent, very strict judgment journal for himself during periods of time. might be worth asking him, by the way, if you run across Jason, ask him about his judgment journal. And um, I'm some, I'm thinking of that, but the light version, <laughs> you know, the, Hey, Oh, there's judgment in myself. I'm not going to go down that road. Like I'll press pause on that for 30 days. I'm not going to think, should I be doing this or I'm not doing it if perfectly or I'm wondering if it's, I don't, I don't think anything's wrong think you're pretty hard on yourself and being hard on yourself takes up space in your life. It's, it's not a zero sum kind of process. It's I'm judging. Therefore I, you know, I can't be positive at the same time. How's that hit you? Yeah, I, I definitely hear where you're coming from. And, and I work in an industry where it's all customer service. And I think I, you know, I put myself on a pretty high standard, but I'm, but the standard I'm setting is, almost like how am I seen in my customer's eyes? Like I'm doing the work, I'm doing what they need me to do, but it's like, okay, (laughs) am I working hard to get the job done or am I working hard to not let them down? Um, And I, you know, I, I've had that fear a lot in my life of, of letting people down. And I think that's definitely kind of spilled over into this, into this job a little bit. And um, yeah, that's, that's my reaction. Yeah. I'd love for some, thank you, Ken. I'll I'll add another icing in a second, but I'd love for someone else to jump in and give Ken some feedback. I mean, I, I live in the, so unmute yourself and come in, but my career is 
how people think of me, right? And basically, I, I, I never pander to the bottom rung, right? So if, if I'm judging myself off of the bottom rung of my clients, how they see me, then I probably am pandering too low. I mean, sometimes I'll just let those clients go so that I can be the man that I want to be and like give the level of service that I want to give. And that's who I am. And I give my heart and I don't leave anything, you know, I leave it all in the field, but then I'm not going to worry about it later. I'm going to just leave it all in the field. And if they don't like that, then we're not meant to be as, you know, a match for clients. That's how I think about it. How else someone else jump in here? Can you relate to Kent or do you have another, you know, viewpoint? Please. What I see Kent doing is trying to be perfect for everyone. And that's how he measures himself. And a bit of your lower rung, use the Pareto rule, which is 20% of your clients give you 80% of your income. And you focus on them. It's a bit like you don't have to worry too much about the opinions of the bottom rung. Yeah. And the, look up the Pareto rule. It's, it's 80% of your clients give you 20% of your thing or... 20% of your clients are using 80% of your time, well, for the bottom 80, bottom 20%, you're wasting your time. It's worth looking at the Pareto rule. Yeah. I think Randy unmuted himself too. Come on in, Randy. Go for it. Yeah, I, I can relate a lot to Kent. When I, uh, when I got divorced the first time, it was, a, it was really a struggle for me, Kent. I moved from a nice house in the country to an apartment, and I found my time as a father you know, wasn't as good as it was before. And I was spending more time cooking and cleaning and trying to keep up with my job. And it, it took me a, a long time, you know, to try to work through some of those issues as a stress. And, and so, you know, just do the best you can. And, you know, if you got family around that kind of help you take some of that stress off of you to, you know, help you enjoy being a parent. It, it, it certainly can help because I know it was stressful. I used to come home and work at lunch sometimes and have a couple of beers just trying to, you know, get some of the stress off of dealing with people at work and then, you know, feeling like it was a, as a failure as a husband and it was, it was, and it was tough being a, you know, trying to be there for your kids and, you know, having an ex-wife that didn't want me involved in stuff. And, you know, it just, it wore me out. So just, you know, look for help from friends or whatever to try to reduce some of your stress. Yeah, Randy, I appreciate that. Kent, anything that you want to add? I, Kent, I almost feel like if I can stop you from punching yourself in the face, that you're going to be fine. That's what it feels like. <laughs> yeah, let me know how that works for you. I, <laughs> I, I, know I'm, I, I know I'm hard on myself and, you know, I, I, I take a lot of pride in being a parent. I always have even, yeah. even married, you know, like, and I think that was probably almost as disappointing as the divorce itself is, yeah. is like, <laughs> I was this for so many people in my life. And then now it's just <laughs> gone. It's a vapor yeah. trail. And it's, you know, um, I know I'm still the same dad. I'm still the same person. And, and Randy hit it on the head. It's, it's, um, what is this? um, we, uh, you know, it doesn't change who I am, but it's definitely, you know, it, it's, it's changed what's around me. Um, and I'm, and I'm, sometimes I feel like I'm still trying to be this, the exact same person I was, mm. um, just without the support, just without the, the same family unit, things of that nature. So I, I, I'm trying not to change who I am, but I'm kind of changing my values and changing my priorities a little bit, which has been, which has been steps in the right direction, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I hear you. Absolutely. Thanks, Ken. Hey, Kyle, I saw you raise your hand. Come on in. Can you still come in? Yeah. I was just going to say, I can, I can definitely identify with what Ken's saying, you know, and beating yourself up, up over not getting more done in, in work or in life and anything, you know, so kind of just busting your ass and, and not giving yourself that downtime. Um, you know, I have activities and stuff, but, but not like he said, intentional downtime or even just taking care of yourself. You know, I'll have activities and I'll use that as an excuse. Okay. Well, I did this for me, but it's, it's not enough, you know? And like he said, treating yourself as one, a, you know, I, I can definitely identify with all of that. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks Kyle. I appreciate it. 
I just had a first call with a gentleman who was in the military for 12 years. He's 32 now, and he's been out for a year and a half, and he's had a really tough time acclimating to civilian life. And a big piece of what he said was, um, I'm having difficulty finding what's the point, right? Because everything overseas is life and death and the brotherhood. And he, he said he's used to just saying, hey, motherfucker, what are you doing? And talking with the guys, you know, his colleagues like that. And now he's coming back to <laughs> civilian life and his wife, and that's not going very well. And what's the purpose of his life and things like this. And um, I, a, a piece of what I ground myself in, and it's not fun, is that existential understanding that we can make whatever meaning of all of this we want, and we're all not going to be here at some point, right? And that that may sound, um, I mean, certainly we've all talked about that. There's a man on here who's talked about that quite a lot, right? And so what what positive sense are we going to make, even of these little digs we make at ourselves? Like every time we dig at ourselves, it's digging at those around us as well, because they mirror off of us. Something that I think about for myself, right? If I'm beating myself up, I'm kind of beating up my woman and my children too, because they're feeling that. So that's another way that I look at it for my own self. Thanks for coming in, Kyle. So what's a what's a win for you recently, Kyle? Would you say we're doing a win and a challenge? Uh, a win. Plain is... chase. What's that? Plain oh, chase. <laughs> No, that was, that was a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, learning uh, for a win. Uh, learning in the shaving thing. I was trying to to trim up, and you know, I I fucked up, and I learned that uh, I should just let someone else do it. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nice. I've got away without having to go to a barber for you know fifteen years. Uh, I guess I can start paying them now and. <laughs> let someone else take care of all that hard work um and a challenge will be to grow it back <laughs> <laughs> nice no, Keep it, um, keeping it simple yeah no i i got you know i get hooked up on or caught up on things and and i don't know if it's like an addictive quality but like okay a beard okay now i'm into it i'm three months in six months in now i'm getting you know products in there and you know trying to trim it and take care of it and then you know, I, I got caught up on, uh, uh, having a year. It's a year long beard. You grow a beard for a year and okay. But that, but then I messed it up, you know, but like now I'm thinking, okay, it's a fresh start. I learned I've got a, a specific start date, you know, I don't know. It's goofy, yeah. but it's like, sure. I guess a challenge, but I, it's not something that I care that deeply about, <laughs> you know, if I make it, I make it, but yeah, right on, man. Hell yeah, fucking A. I'd never heard of a yeard before. Yeah, me either. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I want to see what mine looks like after a yeard. I don't know. I'm Since, not sure either. But <laughs> yeah, speaking of a yeah, thank you, Kyle. Speaking of a man who's made it all the way, Scott. Scott can tell us what it's like. Thanks, Kyle. That was great, buddy. Scott, give us a challenge and a win, bud. Oh, hell. <clears throat> I don't know, you know, kind of like what you were saying, you know, or just talking about earlier, you know, with the military and stuff, <clears throat> you know, kind of getting out of that and going, finding something that, uh, you know, kind of had that same type of mentality, you know, or people and, you know, kind of, you know, like you were saying, you know, the brotherhood. And that's kind of why I went, you know, to the rigs, you know, doing all that. But then on it, because <clears throat> recently, you know, going through this divorce with that because I was always, you know, even working wise, I always was, I was two people, you know, I had my home life and then at work, you know, there wasn't no home life, you know, home life didn't come into work, you know, cause you had lives in your hand, you know, whatever it was, but then, and I wouldn't bring work or talk about work like with people, but I would take it out on my wife type of thing you know yeah and like now i'm learning how to with you know splitting and all this now learning how to deal with everything on my own in a way and before my coping mechanism was always was alcohol mm -hmm. yeah to deal with it and now i'm learning how to deal with it without you know for legal 
issues, but realizing that, you know, there is, I guess, life after, you know, other than alcohol, when you're dealing with shit, there's other ways to deal with it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And that's the hard, the, I say the hardest part, but turning out to be the easiest part, you know? Yeah, that's great. So how is it, you know, tell us about that. How is it easy for you? Well, just, I mean, realizing that, you know, it, like before I would just, I would either go and get a, get a 12 pack and get drunk, you know, in my room, you know, just sit there in my room and just drink it all in two hours and then go to sleep and get up and go to work. Now it's actually, you know, talking to either friends or my kids even, you know, about yeah. stuff and not having to turn to go out to the bar and have a drink. You know, I go to the bar, but I don't have, you know, I don't drink, you know, I haven't had anything to drink in over almost two months now. Wow. Congratulations. Fantastic. That's awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Phenomenal, Scott. You, you seem to, I hope you give yourself credit for that. I mean, I, I, I want to be in your corner and I'll say, I hope you give yourself credit for that. Cause that's a big deal, Scott, that leap that you've taken, man. That's great. Oh, I mean, I, I have been, I mean, like I said, it's the biggest thing was realizing that you didn't, that I didn't need it. I mean, I always, I mean, I know I'm an alcoholic, you know, I think it just runs in my family. That's just how it is. I've known it for, for years. I mean, between, because even from when I started working after I turned 18, anywhere I've, any job I've had was either been construction, military, or the oil field. And all that does is breed alcohol, pretty much. You know, it's that's what the lifestyle is of all of it, for the most part. Gotcha. Yeah. So. Well, yeah, good for you. Congrats. Absolutely. Thanks for bringing that in. Thank you. Yeah. Let's see. We got time for one more. Who hasn't gone yet? I don't what? think Richard's gone. Who hasn't gone yet? Yeah. Rob. Yeah, go for it, Rob. Well, I was going to hit on some interesting points. Yeah, please. You know, make sure the guys notice that, you know, how we talked about military and coming back into civilian life, you know, but also when you think about, you know, if you weren't in the military, you know, and I wasn't, you know, Scott was. Most of our life, we were hanging out with our buddies. And then we went into this marriage or relationship and buddies went to the side. It, it was a, like a culture shock. And where did we take all this stuff? You know, when we were being with the guys, where did we take it to? We automatically took it to our wife. <laughs> you know, we dumped all that shit on her. And, and here we are now bringing it back to the men. And, and, you know, it's almost a culture shock in a way, again, bringing it back to the men. But you, you kind of notice where it goes. You know, it's we need men in our lives. We can't let that go. Going yeah. into a relationship, we still need the men in our lives. And, and often we let that go once we get into the relationship. And where do we go with everything? It's like right now, the, coming back from the Middle East, out of the military, culture shock. Now I'm, what, what's my purpose? Where am I going? What am I doing? Where yeah. do I bring my shit to? You know? That's yeah. a great point. That Very is a fantastic point. Yeah, absolutely. And so any last words, gentlemen? We got about one minute left, Rob. That's a good, that's a great point. The culture shock. And I mean, we either learn that the hard way by ourselves, or we learn that with men beside us, you know, that are blazing the trail in front of us. And that's one of the things I say in the first call with every single man is that there's a group of us all around the world, all around the country that you'll have deep connections with forever. I mean, that's what I'm about. Right. And you don't, you don't have to like shooting shotguns with me. You don't have to like playing golf. You know, I don't play golf, but you don't, you don't have to like any of those particular things, but you will find something, whether it's fishing or just going hiking or building something or, you know, having coffee with a man, whatever it may be talking about religion with Sven, whatever it may be, there are men in this group that you can connect with. And I'm very proud of that. Absolutely. All right, gentlemen, have a great rest of your night. Fantastic to see you. I'll see you same time next week, Wednesday, 7 p.m. Mountain time. Adios, guys.